Listen up, get ready, I'm not gonna take no more. There's a revolution, a revelation going on in my soul. Buckle up, get ready, we're not gonna sit back. Okay, welcome back to more Live from the Heartland for the week of the 18th of March. And I'm really honored now to bring on someone who is involved in trying to elect Brandon Johnson, our next mayor, and that would be Amisha Patel of the Brandon Johnson campaign. Good afternoon to you, Amisha. Hey, good afternoon. Glad to be here. It's, I'm really glad to have you. Why don't you tell us a brief bit about yourself and your role in the campaign? Sure. Um, so I'm a longtime community and labor organizer. I've been working in Chicago for over 20 years. Um, or uh, doing organizing workers into unions and then um, leading the Grassroots Collaborative, which is a community labor um, coalition. Um, I left my job at the end of last year, which was quite a big thing to do, but it was it was time for me to think about a different role. And it's been um, really great and wonderful, wonderful to get to put time into um, electing Brandon as our next mayor of Chicago. So for the campaign, the work that I do, I have worked on um, helping put together um, most of its policy platforms that you see on his website, convening people who I'm not an expert on everything, but I know people who are. And so pulling together the advocates and specialists on a range of issues that help really draft um, much of his platforms. And currently I'm playing the role of director of community outreach, as well as you know, trying to think about what happens next right after um, April 5th and beyond. So that's also really fun to get to do. Well, I'm going to save that what happens next to later in the interview. Uh, Amisha Patel, uh, tell us a little bit about Brandon Johnson and uh, the roots of this campaign. Sure. So Brandon Johnson um, is a public school teacher um, who uh, eventually decided to Continue, um, to organize um, as staff of Chicago Teachers Union. I think I, that's when I first met him, so maybe about 15 years ago, um, and getting to work on really critical issues like uh, um, getting an elected representative school board or fighting, you know, to make sure that we pass the, the fair tax amendment, um, you know, a range of different issues that we've gotten to work on side by side. Uh, for since 2018, he's also been my Cook County Commissioner, um, so that's also really lovely to get to see and connect with him in that way, and and to see him fight for, um, you know, for many different pieces to make sure that folks um, have equal and full access to housing, right? That don't don't have have their records used against them, and being able to secure um, quality housing, um, being able to you know his work to prioritize. Um, you know, uh, communities of color and black people specifically with his budget for black lives. So getting to getting to see him, you know, sort of be part of serving the community from whether it was for his time as a as a public school teacher to his time as an elected official um, and really through all of it, really, him bringing his sens sensibility as an organizer, which to me is actually is so is what's most exciting about um, uh, a mayor, a mayor Brandon Johnson, is that we really have someone rooted in organizing, rooted in community, um, who's on the fifth floor, um, which has been many decades <laughs> since that's been the case. So um, very exciting moments. No, oh, that's good to hear. Okay, he's running against a guy who's far more conservative and kind of. Uh, whether he intends it or not, I think he probably does, is a little bit of a great white hope kind of candidate. Um, that would be Paul Ballas, who um, i like to share that he has pretty much failed everywhere he's gone, uh, running school boards, et cetera. And uh, he appears to, uh, why he's running for mayor, I don't know, but uh, he didn't do well the last time he tried it. How does the campaign look to you? Um, how does, uh, you know, it, some people said right on, it was probably, uh, the opposition's to lose. Uh, it seems like Brandon is uh, picking up steam. What's your sense of the campaign? And how do you see it going? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think as an organizer, I'll say there have been so many campaigns that I've started off on and people are like, that's impossible. You're not going to get it. <laughs> I remember, I will, I, will, I will not name him, but a prominent journalist. Um, we were on a panel together and I was talking about the fight for 15 at the early the early days of it and coming out of the um coming out of this the uh the tv station he was like 
it's not going to happen. You know, like this is, you know, it's like, I get it. You're going to like call for it, but it's never going to happen. So anyway, I feel like this is, again, once, once again, the case here with Brandon, when he first, uh, you know, ran, he was, you know, yeah, people, a lot of people didn't know him. And so expected very little about his ability to, um, to make it here, right, including um, uh, uh, Mayor Lightfoot as well, right, who just a few weeks ago said there's no way we're going to have, a, you know, a Mayor Johnson. And, and I think what we have known is like that actually that the challenge was just that people getting to know Brandon and getting to listen to him, but that if they actually had that opportunity, they'd be with him that what his values are, what his beliefs are, and what his record is, is all rooted in community, um, all rooted in Chicago and um, in what neighborhoods across the city are looking for. So we've really seen that to be true. We've uh, had an incredible field operation um, that has, you know, reached certainly not every corner of the city, but it's been a massive, a massive force that's only growing. The number of volunteers have exploded since he made the runoff. Um, and then of course, you know, some fun, some good funding from, primarily labor unions, right? People who, who are with working people and working families every single day to, to get him on, um, on air. And so where do I think we're at now? I think, um, I think we're on track to win um, and it's going to be really tough. Like it's not, this is, there's no slam dunks in this race. It is going to be, it's an epic battle. I think reminiscent um, certainly of, uh, of Harold Washington, um, his first fight in, and like, it feels very much like, you know, you can see the kind of corporate powers coalescing. Um, private equity is uh, Paul Vallis's primary funder. If you look at who's pouring money into him, um, it is big business. It is the financial industry. Um, it is uh, folks who support police, you know, sort of uh, mass policing and criminalization. Um, it is folks who uh, have, very homophobic viewpoints um, and are very, you know, um, affiliated with uh, right-wing politics. And um, there's a lot of money when you talk about that group of people, right, um, in terms of our opposition. And, um, and so that's the battle, right, is like, can we, can we, you know, raise enough funds, continue to raise enough funds to really compete, which I think we can, um, and we're doing that. And how do we have those conversations, right, door to door, um, across the city to talk about um, what who Brandon is, and we know when we have them, where people are with us immediately. So we're really excited, um, and it's we need every single vote. Um, we don't people who are sitting on the sidelines um, is going to be uh, just going to sort of put more leave more power in the hands of the opposition. So we've got to make sure folks come out. Well, we had uh, a lot of younger people sort of came around for Brandon. You know, I mean, I confess to have been a Chewy supporter. Uh, from the old, you know, you go way back with Chewy, uh, and uh, I'm very fond of him, but I don't think he ran a very good campaign, and I also think that Johnson, uh, Brandon picked up a lot of steam, particularly from young people. I know in my own family, two of my uh, three kids in Chicago uh, came out for Brandon, uh, and um, I just, what's your take on how much energy the youth have, and uh in just the whole notion of turning out people, what are you doing? What are you doing about that? Yeah, no, it's a great question. I mean, you know, looking at the vote totals, we know we really want to increase the number of young people voting, um, and how hard that is on a runoff election, right? Like to uh, like for people to even know there's wait, there's one more election still. One wait, more time. <laughs> you've got to come out again. It's not over. Um, so, I mean, I think what we're really trying to do is animate people, right? Because that's the key is like, and and, his, and Brandon's vision is, I think our key, um, our, our, our big power in animating voters and young people in particular. So we've got, we've got efforts to organize students. Um, we've got more capacity this time than we did. You know, it definitely was like a, a very small, nimble team. I was a volunteer, you know, just volunteering 20 hours a week to try to like help make things go. Um, and so we've got a little bit more of a team now, which is great. It continues to grow. And so we've got student-based organizing at a different level than um, before the runoff, which is really exciting. Um, really trying to figure out how to keep engaging um, folks who work with young people uh, to be able to, especially like new, 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 newly 18-year-olds and 19-year-olds, right, whose first election this might be. And to really, again, have brand, like the big thing I think is getting people to um, hear from him in some way or the other, right? And that's because we know that young people, when they hear him, it makes, like, he knows how to speak to young people. He knows how to engage young people. And that's really going to be key um, to April 4th. Amisha Patel, uh, 
I just thought I want to share with you, I, you probably know that uh, Maria Haddon in the 49th Ward turned her campaign office into a Brandon office. And uh, anyone wants to pick up a sign, you go to Morse and Greenview, and uh, there are plenty of them to, to have. They got a new shipment in. What do you think is the main difference between the two candidates? Uh, what What is the one thing? I mean, there's a lot of stuff about the police coming on, and we know that uh, the kind of neo-Nazi, I hate to say it, but he apparently is the Katzenzara, of the uh, Fraternal Order of the Police. He's come out for uh, the opposition candidate. Uh, what, so there's a lot of stuff, and Brandon seems to have modified his position on the police a little bit. What do you think is the biggest issue, or do you want to address the police issue? I mean, I think, so Brandon, so let's, we'll talk about safe, public safety first. I mean, I think that um, the message where, that he and the campaign is trying to put out is really separate policing from public safety, right? Like police equals public safety is the dominant narrative. So the only questions that people want to ask Brandon is like police, police, police. And I think having the broader question about, well, let's first talk about prevent. If we want to address crime, let's talk about prevention first, right? Um, and not just like, you know, policing is an after the fact thing. It's not a preventive for, um, solution by any means. And I think that like, and I think he's done a really good job of lifting that up. Um, and of course they want to be able to like the, get to that, the kind of punchline of, you know, trying to get Brandon to say, well, what about police? Are you going to have more of them or less of them, right? Like, where do you stand on it? And I think the reality of what we've got to do as organizers, um, but certainly also Brandon, but as organizers, what we need to do is continue to have those conversations about what is actually public safety, which is not a sound bite, right? Like, more police is a sound bite, and it's a thing that, like, people can say over and over and are seldom questioned about, well, one, how are you going to get more police? Two, how does that equal more safe, like, you know, greater safety? Um, but, you know, we know the burden is much more in someone who has a much more, much bigger vision of, pu of public safety and policing. And so, um, you know, so I think that we, we want, like, his values are really clear. And how does he get to enacting those values is going to take some time. It's not going to be an overnight thing in the administration um, once he's in office. Um, but I think that that's the challenge that he's in is that like, that's the position that people want to put him into. Um, but I'm, you know, I think that we're really clear about his, like what, what actually needs to happen to make uh, Chicago safer. And that is about greater investments um, in education, in after school programs and job and youth employment. Um, that's when we talk, like, let's get into the details about that. Would love to hear right. Paul Bellis talk about, well, how do you prevent crime? What is it, what are you going to do to make sure that our communities are resourced? Um, and, you know, to get to your point of the difference, and I think this leads quite like smoothly into the biggest difference between the two is that um, Brandon is rooted in people and community and has um, lived his whole life um, centering community and people. And Paul Vallis has lived his life really um, butchering people and communities uh, in terms of cut, cuts, right? Cuts to programs, cuts to service, privatization, um, really trying to shrink government, shrink what resource, public safety net of people. Um, and I think Brandon's really rooted in expanding public services, expanding, right? Not just even holding the line, but let's actually talk about the world that we want. And that vision of the world that we want is completely different between Ballas and, and Johnson. Well, it's very true. And um, uh, we we saw a situation where we had, uh, you know, nine candidates running for mayor. And we had, I think, seven of them were African-American. Uh, Brandon, you know, didn't carry any awards. I think he got 40 percent in some. Uh, but it's a different game now. And uh, I'm just wondering if you think there will be any endorsements coming from well, the current mayor or from Chewy Garcia. I mean, I'm I'm putting the word out as best I can that Chewy should come out and endorse him. I think it would be good for the movement as a whole. Uh, what's your take on that? We did see Jesse White, who you know was a neat guy for many years in some ways, kind of ran the motor vehicles, et cetera. And all of a sudden, he comes out with a lot of ads, and you pointed out the big money behind uh, Vallis. <laughs> Uh, but Jesse White and Burnett both came out, as well as uh, Willie Wilson. Uh, what do we got? What do you think about the chances of endorsement uh, by Chewy, et cetera, et cetera? What do you got to tell me? 
Um, I think the chances are really high. I'm really confident about um, a few different uh, candidates um, who ran for mayor coming out to endorse Brandon um, shortly. So um, lots of conversations are in the works. Um, I wish I could announce something today, but I can't. But I can say very clearly that we're we're very confident about um, about some upcoming endorsements uh, for folks like you know. I mean, Chewy has been. Uh, such a leader for 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 decades in this work in this fight, and um, you know the the primary was ugly was ugly on our side of you know like in the fight to um, of, like to get to the runoff. It's not how I would have wanted it to go at all, and it left you know I think a lot of fractures that I think are working. We're prioritizing um, very hard. Many many folks are working to try to heal those fractures right and to and to move forward together. Um, you know, I think that like this is a hard, you know, as an organizer, I, you know, I think we're, I'm very much trained and many of us are trained as like, it's us versus them. It's like, you know, it's like the good guys, the bad guys. And I think too much of it, we fell into a lot of that, um, you know, during the, you know, the last set of months, like it, it was not okay. And so I do think there's a lot of learning for like, how do we, how do we move forward together? Um, and how do we do this in a way that actually brings us together instead of fracturing us? And I have to say, um, there were a lot of things, I think, um, both camps that were not, I just, as someone watching it, not in, you know, not in control of things, but boy, um, or not how we should have done it. And I think there's some, you know, there's some good work to, he uh, to heal that. Uh, and I'm hopeful of where we go, for, how we go for it. Hey, spoiler alert. When we talk about endorsements and we can't get the word out of our guest, we know who Chewy Garcia is endorsing, and it's Brandon Johnson. Back to the show. Enjoy. Well, I'm, I'm really glad to hear that. And I did. I do want to point out that 36 members of the newly elected police district councils have come out for Brandon, and I'm sure there will be more. I'm not sure how those all races fell, progressive, non-progressive, but... Uh, Certainly, a, a lot of good people were elected to that. Um, well, uh, we're going to run out of time because you have another meeting and we have another guest. Uh, I really appreciate you, Amisha Patel, for coming on. Do you want to give us any little parting shot of enthusiasm and uh, eager and go forth into the world to make it a better place? Because Chicago is really a progressive town. We've got a lot of progressive people in the city council. There'll be more. Uh, whoever is going to be the mayor is going to have to deal with that. And, uh, you know, we, we've come a long way since the days of the first daily, and we don't want to lose that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm just, anytime anyone asks me how I'm doing, the answer is, like, I'm amazing. Because this moment is amazing. <laughs> um, there's so much possibility in front of us that we just, like, in my lifetime have, like, you know, not in my lifetime. I was eight with uh, when Harold <laughs> Washington in 1983. But, um, I was there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like you know it's been a long time and i think this moment has you know huge significance of course for chicago definitely also for national significance right for where the democratic party goes um how we actually go on the offense for and fight for what we need how we show what's possible um uh if we actually prioritize working people and working families um and and i'm, I'm so excited and i think really for everyone listening um, it, it is about how we move forward together. Please volunteer to phone bank, to door knock, to canvas. Like we like talk to your neighbors, talk to your friends, get them out. Um, that's going to be the biggest thing because we know um, we know that ballot supporters, like and where the where his votes came from, are going to come out again. Um, and we've really got to make sure that all of our folks um, know about Brandon, know who he is, know where he comes from, and and that he's really is going to be it's a different kind of accountability than we've seen in quite some time. Um, and we're going to hold him accountable, right? Like that's <laughs> lots of lessons from Obama, right? Like we've got to like continue to push hard on the left and push for what we want, and we'll do that. But we've got to first get him elected. So um, so really, all hands on deck, and I'm really excited to get a chance to talk with you about him today. April fourth, April fourth. Okay. And you can vote now. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. Amisha March 20th. Patel. March 20th. Um, early voting starts March 20th. So, like, oh, get, it, get it in. Yeah. All right. Amisha Patel, I look forward to meeting you in person. I've heard great things about you, and you keep up the good work. And we'll Thank do what so we much. can. Thank you. Thanks okay. for having me.